Okay, today we're going to be tying a crayfish imitation. Actually, this was the first YouTube fly tying video that I did. Looking back at it, it really could uh, have been a little better quality. I filmed it with my GoPro, didn't work out too well. But I learned a little bit and got a little better camera. And the reason I'm going to do this is took it out the other day, caught some really nice smallmouth with it. At the end of this tie, I'll show you one of the nice smallmouth that I caught. He was uh, 16 plus inches, just a little over 16. Didn't weigh it, but uh, you know, he was fat, so he was a few pounds. So, let's go ahead and tie this up, and I'll show you the fish afterwards. What I have in the vise is a uh, one aught jig hook. It's, uh, I think it's about a 45 degree bend there. I don't think it's quite uh, 60, but it's a nice little uh, jig hook. And what I use for the claws are, this is a hen pheasant that I selected. Make uh, really nice claws. And the body is going to be just fisherman's wool. Didn't put it in a blender, nothing special about it. Just wrap it on and go. I want to add a little lead wire to it first, a little lead wrap. This is a point two o o two o. Just going to start with several turns. You want to make it uh, it's a little heavier than what it is. And you, when you start your thread, what I have is that uh, Royal Sissy Hunter Denier thread. It's about the right color I needed. I got, uh, was going to use a heavier thread, but it really doesn't matter. As long as you don't uh, break it, color is more important than the denier. Let's go ahead and start it on, wrap it over the lead a couple times to seat it where you need it. Keep it. Uh, about the midway point of the shank, just a little forward toward the eye. Good, cut away your excess. Good, wrap it back. To the top of the bend of the hook. Give it a little bit of a base here. Now you're going to add some eyes. What I have is chain bead. We'll make these the eyes. These uh, chain beads are pretty easy to work with. It doesn't take much to cut them. In fact, I just got a pair of utility scissors here that are not all that big. Just put it in there and snip it right off. So now I got two eyes here. So I'll just set that in there, wrap it a couple times over, get it in place. I like to start them right at the top of the bend of the hook here, and that's where the eyes will lay at. Wrap it in pretty good. What you don't want is don't wrap it in pretty good and end up with them turning on you. So if you wrap them real good, they won't turn. Wrap it under a couple times. It's one of the secrets of keeping them in here. Wrap it under. And then you can do some figure eights. And if you really think you need to secure them, you can super glue the bottom and wrap it in a couple times. I don't necessarily think I need to do that. All right. Now we're going to add our claws. Like I said, I have uh, two feathers I selected from the pheasant hen. I'm going to use these as claws. So on your side, I'm going to place it 
right under that chain bead eye. And I'm going to take it out pretty long. I want these claws to be pretty long there. Go ahead and wrap it in while I'm still holding it. Now I'll get the other one. And you're going to place it just opposite. Same length, same way, just under the eye. The reason I like under the eye, the claws don't end up sticking straight up in the air. And the eyes kind of secure them in there. So cut away your excess here. Go ahead and wrap it in. And now you're going to go in front of the eyes. A couple wraps. And then down under the claws. Up under. So they pull them up. That's how they sit out there. Like pretty straight on. So it looks pretty good. From here we're going to add a piece of monofilament. This is something I had around for years. This is a just four pound test mono. Cut yourself off a piece. Lay it in there and go ahead and Secure it. Give it a couple good wraps. And now we're going to add some fisherman's wool. When I normally use fisherman's wool, I normally blend it in the coffee grinder to make dubbing. But this I found works pretty good just by pulling out a long section like this make sure it's pretty long you don't want to short yourself and if you have excess and it's too short to use on another fly and then you can put it right in a blender and use it for your dumping now this is 100% wool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by laying it right on top and I want the wool to hang out about an inch or so in front of the eye. Go ahead and wrap it in real securely. Keep it right on top. Pretty easy to do. Just stretch it out. This wool is real durable. But that's why I tied the uh, piece of monofilament in there. We're going to really secure it. Once you have it in there, just good, wrap it down good. Take your thread back to the front. And now you want to go ahead and start wrapping it. I like to use my rotary vise as much as possible. If you watched any other videos, you know that. And I want to start wrapping. And I want to make, a, make it thicker toward the head. And then we'll taper it back toward the eye of the hook. Good, start taping her down a little bit. One more. All right, go ahead and secure it.
once you have it secured you can go ahead and cut off the excess now you want to wrap it in real good and now from here take your monofilament and wrap under the fly. What you want to do is just make sure you secure this so it doesn't get wasted just on the first fish you catch. You want to be able to use it for several fish. And all you're doing here is securing it. Wrap that uh, piece of mono a couple times around the last section there so you can secure it real well. Give it some, several wraps. And cut it away. Now you want to bring your thread back up through the body. You're going to make a couple of wraps. Try to do it nicely so it doesn't look too messy. Back to just below where the head would be and make several more wraps. Now you're going to add some legs. The legs that I'm using are these crazy legs from Hairline. They're actually pretty thin. Uh, it says uh, crazy legs brown orange flake. These are real thin ones. I got thicker ones that uh, when I bought these I liked how thin they were and it's the main reason why I bought them. At one point I was actually using hackle to make legs on these and decided that these might be a little better. So I'll take one of the sections of crazy legs, fold it in half, and now you're going to cut it in the middle there. And that's all you're going to need. You're only going to need half of two of these crazy legs. Now this is going to ride upside down. So you want the legs to be on top of your fly right now, which will be the bottom of the fly. Even up the legs. It's pretty good. Give it a couple wraps. Bring it down just a little bit, I think. Right about there. Now I'm going to do the other side. Do my side. On the middle. Give it one wrap there. If you need to even it out, that's pretty good. Bring it down a little bit. Give it a few wraps. And now you have some legs. Now you want to wrap your thread back toward the eye of the hook. Big wraps, just crossing the thread that you already had there. A couple wraps. Get your whip finish tool. Pull whips. I don't need to really whip it any more than that because I'm going to put some uh, UV on it. Alright, so now you have your fly pretty well finished. Pretty quick. You can tie a bunch of these real quick. Rides in the water real nice. What I like to do from here is take a snip about the length of the tail I want and take this uh, wire hackle brush here, dubbing brush, 
and I can brush it out. Roll it under a couple times, really gets it all cleaned out there. Alright, so now you got a nice tail there. Looks pretty good, huh? Alright. Little UV finished. What you want to do is secure your thread. You don't want to get. Uh, that'll be the first to fail on you if you don't secure it. So I like to put a little top of, little drop of UV on top, and then a little drop of UV on the underside. This is actually the top side here. Take your bucket, roll it around in there. In between the legs, same thing with the uh, by the eye of the hook here. That way, if uh, any of the thread fails through all day fishing with it, it'll stay secured right there. Zap it. Real simple. Takes you just a few minutes to tie it. I spend more time talking to you than I do tying it here. So you can see how simple it is. Claws are actually separated. You can leave them like that. or you... It's just how I fish it. I don't do nothing fancy with it. When it's in the water, it's just streaming behind it. Very effective fly. I've uh, caught trout. Catch a lot of bass with it. The bass that you're going to see is a really nice smallmouth out of a skinny creek air. Skinny water. The water was real low. It's actually a really nice trout stream. But uh, wife and I went up there. We targeted smallmouth because it was, the water was too warm for the trout. So we left the trout alone and uh, caught only smallmouth that day. So, all right. Hope you enjoy it and stay tuned to see the fish and if you like this video please click subscribe give me a like let me know uh, what you think about it and I hope uh, hope your fishing season is going great I know that it's been warm and the water temperature has been a little low where I've been but hopefully you're doing well and hope you're staying safe alright I'll see you all next time and stay tuned for the uh, fish here we go Got him. Got a big one. Oh, yeah. Yep. Finally. He thought he was eating a little crawdad. It's funny how all the big ones showed up now. They're like, what do you got, beer buddy? What'd you eat? Come on. Hey, he's strong. Look how big he is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> He's bigger than I thought he was. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. Look how big he is. <sighs> I 
have to get a measurement on him later. Or is he going to the, uh, right to the 8.6? All right. How about that, bad boy? All right, let's go. See you later. All right, nice creek smally, huh?